Okay, so we're right here, and I know that's 26. I'm going to add another $6.50 to this, and that makes it at 6 plus 6 is 12. That's 32.50, but we also said that it was five and a half hours. So I need to take half of $6.50. Well, if I take half of 50, I know that's 25, and half of 6 is 3. So it makes it $3.25. I'm going to add it over here. And my total is 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, and $35.75. Okay, so that's one way of solving it. The other way is simply, and remember, if you got to go back and pause, do so. The other way will be $6.50 times five and a half hours. Now, I know I'm going to move my decimal one, two, and three. Okay, so five times zero is zero. Five times five is 25. Carry my two. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Now I'm done here, and I'm going to put my 0 here to hold my 1s, because now I'm moving over to my 10s. And I'm right here. See how I'm coming straight down? So 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry my 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Now I'm going to add these up at 0, that's 5, that's 7, that's 5, and that's 3. And I said I needed to move my decimal 1, 2, and 3, because those are all the numbers that are to the right of the decimal. And I'm starting at the end, and I'm moving at 1, 2, and 3. So my answer is $35.75. So that's how much she earns. And I'm coming over here, and my answer is A. So no matter how you break it down, whether you're going to be putting it in a T-chart with the rule, not a T-chart, but in a, in a uh, table with the rule, input-output table, or you're going to do standard multiplication, or even whichever strategy you use to multiply, that's going to be your choice. Number three, Carly and Jackie bought snacks at the movies. Now, Carly, now, y'all go to the movies, so most of you do. And so what is it that you, you end up buying snacks? I know I do with my girls. And so it's Carly and Jackie bought snacks at the movies. Now, Carly bought popcorn and a drink for $12.30, and Jackie bought some candy for $5.25. Now, Jackie's mom, she paid for the snacks, so she gave the cashier a $20 bill. Here we go again. How much change will Jackie's mom receive back? We're talking about how much is she going to get back from that $20. So I'm going to put here, Carly spent $12.30. Jackie spent $5.25. Jackie's mom paid. I'm going to just put mom paid with $20 bill. Question is, so Jackie's mom received I before E except before C blank change back. Okay. All right. So now I need to add up this here. So I have $12.30 plus $5.25. That makes it at 5. That makes it at 5. That makes it 5, 6, 7. Wow, they spent $17.55. Now you can count up. You can take this and add it to one of these. It will need to come up to 20. Can't go over 20 because 20 is your total amount. Or you can simply subtract it out. And so I'm going to take my 20. I'm going to subtract a penny from it. So I'll have 19.99 minus 17. 55. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 minus 5 is 4. My decimal comes straight down. 9 minus 7 is 2. And i got to add my penny back in. 
make it my $20. That's five, that's four, so it's $2.45 is the change that she got back. Okay, so these are the problems you're going to see on the star next Tuesday. So you need to really be going through, and this is a good time to be practicing with your parents on getting change back and having to figure it out and doing that problem solving with that multi-step. You'll have to add up, then subtract, and looking at it. So you're going to have quite a few of these problems. We're looking at probably between 35 to 38 problems for math. Uh, you only have four hours, so be working on the different strategies that help you subtract out quickly or how you can use your answers to solve the problem if you're still struggling with uh, subtraction because you're going to have to, you can use your answers to help you figure out the, the problem or the answer uh, as well. All right, and now let's look at here. The model below represents an expression. So the expression is going to be which one of these. So which expression best represents this model? All right, well, I have group one, group two, I have three groups and four groups. Now I'm going to look at each one. I have one, two, three. That's three tenths here. Here I have, I'm going to just write it up here, three tenths, I have three tenths, I have three tenths, and I have one, two, three tenths. So what do you think I ended up doing? Well, look at this one right here. You see there's a whole group? That's one and two tenths. And how, what did I do? I had one and two tenths, and how many groups did I divide those into? One, two, three, four. I divided those into four groups, and each one is going to give me three tenths. Okay? So which one of these equations then? Absolutely right here. One and two tenths divided into four is equal to three tenths. I didn't have four groups of one and one whole and two tenths, because that would have been one whole and two tenths four times. That doesn't work. I didn't have a total of four groups and I was dividing those into two tenths. That doesn't work at all. And I didn't start I don't have three tenths times one and two tenths because otherwise my groups would have been separated. So that doesn't work. So the best answer is C. And again, you're going to see those examples on the star, on those models, and that's what we've already been going through, but we did that earlier in the year, so those are these are just refreshers. Look at number five. Riley had a 39-inch strip of ribbon. Now, she cut the ribbon into 12-inch pieces. What was the length of each ribbon? All right, so now I have a total, and I have a part, and I need to look for a part. So she had a total, Raleigh had a 39-inch strip of ribbon. That's her total. And remember, when we're given a total, it's either going to be a subtraction or a division. She cut the ribbon into 12 inches. So cut, and how many equal parts? So I'm going to divide. So what was the length of each ribbon? So now I'm going to do my 12 equals length of each ribbon. And if you do arts and crafts, this is realistic. You're going to have a long ribbon and you've got to cut because you're going to make bows for baskets or putting it on children's hair if you're doing um, a dance or cheerleading. So, and now I'm going to put my 39 here. Okay, and so now I'm going to put my multiplication. 12 can go into 39. Well, I know that 12 times 2 equals 24, then 12 times 3 equals 36. So 12 cannot go into 3. I'm going to put my 0 there. 12 can go into 39 three times, close to, without going over, because 3 times 12 equals 36. I'm going to subtract that out. And this is going to be 9 minus 6 is 3. So it gives me a remainder of 3. But remember... When we were dividing, and we can add in our decimal, because you've got to look at your answer choices over here. I'm going to add in a decimal, and I'm going to put a zero here, and I'm going to bring down my zero. 12 can go into 30. Well, if it's 12 times 3 is 26, so it's going to go in two groups, because that's closest to without going over. 
Okay, so 2 times 12 equals 24. And I'm going to subtract out, regroup. That makes it a 2. 10 minus 4 equals 6. Okay. And then here I'm going to bring to add another 0 because I can only. In fifth grade, we're only going to go up to the two, to the tenth, I mean to the hundredth place. So I'm going to bring down the next one, and it makes it 60. Can y'all read that? Let's see if I can just erase that. So it makes it 60. Well, I know that 12 times 5 equals 60, and that gives me a zero. So my answer is 3 and 25 hundredths. So I'll see that in start box. All right, so remember that we can add our zero. You'll need to look at your answer choices to help you make sure that you're doing, you're adding your zeros in properly and then bringing it straight down. Don't forget to utilize your answers to help coach and guide you through. Number six, Crystal drives her car for work-related trips. Okay, her total car mileage starting a work trip red, this is the total that she started on, was 34,083 and three-tenths miles. Now, she recorded her mileage at the end of each day in the table. So, day one, she ended up with this amount of miles. Day two, this is what she ended up. Day three, she ended up here. Day four, this was here. On the fifth day, this was here. So the question is, is how many total miles did Crystal drive in her car during this five-day period? Okay, so here's the total amount that she ended with. This is end. So we have a total. We're not going to be dividing. We're going to subtract a part to give you the part which is the miles traveled. And so I'm going to have 36,067 point nothing, zero, and I'm going to subtract 34,083 and 3 tenths. Again, you can take this one part and add it here, which will give you your total amount, which is this. So if that's easiest for you to take a part of your answer, this is the end, and I'm going to write this here for total. Okay? So you can take this part, add it here, but you can't go over this amount. You have to get exact. Well, I'm going to subtract it out. Seven. I'm going to regroup that to six. Bring that over here. Oh, one thing that I did forget. Put in my decimal first before I even start. So 10 minus 3 equals 7. Okay. Well, I know that could be right. That could be right. That could be right. That's not going to be possible because it's going to be 7 tenths. So now I have 6 minus 3 is 3. Okay, so I have two possibilities here. Cross that out. Can't take 8 out of 6. So I need to regroup. Can't do 0. So I'm going to go over to my 6. I'm going to make that to a 5. Bring that into a 10. Regroup it again to a 9. And then make this into a 16. And so 16 minus 8 equals 8. Okay. 9 minus 0 equals 9. 5 minus 4 equals 1. And so my answer is 1,983 and 7 tenths. Remember to check your work. You're going to do the inverse. So you'll add. So you'll be 1,983 and 7 tenths plus 34,083 and 3 tenths will equal to your 36,067 miles. All right, let's look at number 7. You've been doing this for a long, long time. So what quotient, again, quotient means the answer to a division problem. So 100, 1 and 6,500, I just got sloppy there. 1 and 6,500 divided by 3. So I know